I used to struggle with my flesh, sexual immorality, very, very badly to the point where it was routine, to the point where it was actually driving me. I was actually a slave to sin. It's like, it just seems like as if like your mind tells you to do something and you do it. It's like almost a spirit comes upon you and it's so strong and it makes you want to be sexually active. And it feels like you're just, re- it's like, uh, and, and you just want to do something to get some type of release. And I realized that that was an evil spirit. And whenever I would pray, that presence would leave. Okay. So I had a former manner of life. I've had a past of intense sexual immorality. It was like an addiction to a, to a feeling, how it made me feel. And it's like a drug. It's like it's a spirit and you just need it and you're dependent upon it. When you feel rejected, when you feel depressed, when you have anxiety, you just want to masturbate, watch porn. You just want to be sexually active. That's what I wanted to do every time. That was my go-to when things were going wrong in my life. Even when you were just bored, you wanted to do those things. So I was actually a slave to these things. And I did not know how to overcome these things because it was my lifestyle for so many years, right? But as a child, as a, as a young kid, it was planted into my mind, into my subconscious. When I was like in grade five or four, my friends, when their parents were at home, would put pornography on the television screen, right? And at that time, it didn't affect me, but I didn't know that something entered, to me, entered me in that moment. So when I got to a, a certain mature age, it began to slowly manifest in the right time. Because oftentimes things happen to us as children. We're exposed to certain things as children. And when we get to uh, um, a certain age of maturity, right? If we're poked in certain places, if we're in the wrong place, approached by a particular person, that can make something manifest that has been laying dormant for a long time. And that's what happened with me. When that happened with me, I begin to, in the same year, I believe it was my last year in high school, fornication, um, smoking weed, um, alcoholism, all in the same year. And that really happened because of peer pressure. All my friends on the basketball team were all living in the same same house, peer pressuring me. Yo, you shouldn't be a virgin. Or, yo, are you a virgin? Or, yo, just smoke this, drink that. And I did it. Let's go to the club. Let's do that. And I did all these things because of peer pressure. I didn't want to feel like, you know, I wasn't cool or anything like that. I was the best basketball player on the team. I was well known and whatnot, but there was so there was house parties and you couldn't you couldn't avoid it because I lived in a house. Women all over the place, you know, drunk guys, alcoholism, all these things. And that seed that was planted to me planted in me as a child began to manifest once I entertained that environment. Once I entertained those women, once I entertained the alcoholism and and, and the smoking weed. And it became to a place where my I liked it, the endorphins and dopamines in my mind. I loved it. So I'm just like, I'm going to keep doing it because that felt good. And it came to a point where now it became my lifestyle. It became my lifestyle. And I now became a double-minded, lukewarm Christian with a reprobate mind. And I was always a oh, good, holy Christian, never was living in sexual morality, never living in sin. But once I moved out, of my father's house, things went a different way in my life, you know, and I would, sexual immorality became routine for me, routine, routine. And I would, I would actually feel like I'm a slave to this and I would look forward to doing it. But before I would do it, I would contemplate in my mind and I would say, this is wrong. I should not do this. But I knew once I was contemplating it and thinking it already, I was already imagining it, imagining it happened in my mind, thinking about the pros and the cons, reminiscing that this feels good. I can repent later. I can ask for forgiveness. But in my mind already, I already did it. In my mind, I was already playing it out. The Bible talks about if you lust after a woman in your own heart, you already committed a- adultery. So adultery was in my heart. And before I would sin, I would play it out in my mind, the pros and the cons. Should I do it? What are the pros and the cons? All these things. And then it would take place. And then you go in your room, you go take a drive, whatever, and you fall into that sin. Because that seed that was planted in me as a child, I, I didn't tell anyone. Right? I didn't get no prayer. I didn't get no uh, uh, deliverance. And I noticed from the age, you know, when I was in grade, in the fifth grade up until 
maybe like the 10th grade, I begin to notice certain desires beginning to manifest in my life, but they were, they were never just heavy, no concern or anything like that, but I never told anyone, right? So I began to live a life of sin and, and keep it, none of my family members knowing or anything like that. And that's the most dangerous thing that you can ever do because when you live in sin privately and you tell no one, you will remain in that sin. You'll always act like you're righteous or you're a true man of, uh, a, a true man of God or whatever, but privately, you're living in total sin. So how I overcame that, I will cry before the Lord and say, Lord, I cannot do this. I was a slave to it. God, I'm trying, Lord, I cannot. Lord, help me, help me, help me, help me. And I felt so dirty afterwards. And every time I would sin sexually, right before I fall asleep, I would say, Lord, forgive me, Lord. I command every evil spirit. I, I command every spirit of this to break off me. I understood deliverance. I understand legal rights. I understand spiritual spouses, but I would pray all these prayers right after doing it. And the next day, sin again, do the sexual sin again, and then pray those prayers as if those prayers were doing anything. Because the Bible says that there is no forgiveness without repentance. We must first have to repent of our sins. I didn't truly understand that before. I thought if I asked for forgiveness and re the reason I was asking for forgiveness um, when I go to sleep at night is because I was afraid like the rapture might happen or uh, Jesus will come and I'll whatever, or someone will come kill me at night. So I'll pray. I would pray and I would, I would abuse grace. I'm telling you, I would abuse grace. And I hated how I felt after I sinned, but I loved it during, and I loved the thought of it before. But afterwards, it makes you feel disgusting and dirty. Now, there was nothing I could do to stop myself because I was already addicted. Right. But the one thing that truly helped me wasn't just prayer, but it was the word of God. Right. The Bible says in First Thessalonians chapter four, verse four, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable. So I had to learn my body, learn my mind, learn my weaknesses, learn my environment where should I should not be there. What are my weaknesses in this moment, in this year? Should, 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 um, what can I, what social media apps can I not be on? What accounts should I not follow? What, who should I not entertain? Who should I be following on social media? What friends should I have? So I begin to control the things I could control. I, 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 the word of God empowered me to understand that I actually have power over my flesh, that I have power over the works. I have power, I have the free will to say yes or say no. But when I was living in sin, I didn't have a foundation of the word of God. So I didn't understand my authority in Christ, my identity in Christ. So I kept living in sin, abusing grace. I thought that deliverance was all about, okay, I get delivered. Those lustful desires are not there anymore or I'll automatically stop the sin. No, there was a work for us to do to actually say, I'm going to control my f flesh and say no, no matter how hard it is. Now, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. When I would read that verse, I would say, man, you're telling me that the disciples were tempted. You're telling me that Apostle Paul, all those people in the Bible were tempted. We know that Samson was tempted. Obviously he fell, but we know that there was a lot of people who were tempted. King, De King David fell, you know, but there was a lot of men of God, the disciples, that they were tempted in the same way I was. So what I was going through was not uncommon. What I was going through was not just random, but every person goes through it. And there are testimonies and there are people who are victorious. The next verse says, and God is faithful. He will not, he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. So you mean to tell me that what I was struggling with is not beyond what I can bear. See, I did not know that because I did not know the word of God. And once I began to read that verse, it empowered me. I would look at my hands and I would be like, who's making me move my hands? Myself. Who's making me move my hands up and down? Myself. Who's making me jump? Myself. And I realized I have control over my body. No matter how I feel, I have control. I am doing that sin, not a demon. So all the times I'll go into prayer and fasting to cast out this spirit and stop this spirit of lust and masturbation, were there evil spirits leaving? Yes. 
but I couldn't cast out my flesh and my mindsets, right? This is why the Bible tells us to renew our mind with the word of God. See, there was no renewal of, there was no renewing of my mind with the word. So I had the same old lustful mindsets, perversion, thoughts of lust, um, daydreaming, reminiscing, all those things. And those things will captivate me and then lead me back into my vomit. The Bible says in Galatians chapter five, verse one, do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. I would always submit again to the yoke of slavery because I was a Christian that didn't read my word. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to man and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so you can endure it. So there's a way out. So there is an escape. And I never knew that when I was living in sin. I just knew that what I was doing was wrong. But the way out is the grace that God has given us, the authority that God has given us, and it's, it's our identity in Christ. Once we understand who we are and the power God has given unto us, then we will realize that the door is always open, that we always have the power to overcome. The Bible says, let your yes be yes and let your no be no. So we got to be certain of who we are in Christ. We have to have a knowledge of the word of God because when we do not have any form of knowledge, we'll remain in bondage. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We will never have wisdom truly if we do not study the word. We will never truly fear God if we do not study the word. James chapter 1 verse 14 through 16. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his, by his own desires and enticed. So every time I would be tempted, I was being tempted by what I, what I entertained. I lived in heavy sexual immorality, smoking weed, getting drunk all the time, clubbing. That was my life, living that secret life when I was in university, when I was in high school. You feel me? And I was being dragged away by my own desires and enticed. So my own sinful nature, living that lifestyle, evil spirits would enhance that because I would be entertaining that sin without repentance. Then when that desire has conceived, it will give birth to sin. And sin, when it's full grown, births full, brings forth death. So if in my life, it first started with a desire. No, it first started with a seed of being exposed to something. Then later on, when I got to a particular age, I began to get desires. Now I entertain these desires. Now these desires gave birth to sin, right? These desires gave birth to sin. And sin became full grown to the point where it led into a place where I there was so much heartbreak, so much soul ties, so much rejection, so much pain where you're not eating because of a certain relationship. You're not, you, you just feel, you just feel degraded and broken. And I was able to overcome these things through studying the word of God and gaining a healthy fear of the Lord. Because many people continue to live in sexual immorality because they don't fear God. I didn't fear God. I was playing around. I was being lukewarm. I wanted to live in the flesh and also make it to heaven. I wanted to live in sin during the day and repent at night so I don't die in my sleep. That's what I was doing. And I knew it was wrong. I knew I'd sin the next day. I knew I'd sin next week. I, I already knew it. But I would pray these prayers knowing I'm going to sin next week. This is why the Bible says, with their, heart, with their mouths they worship me, but their hearts are far away from me. This is called vain worship. That's why the Bible also says that I, the Lord, test the heart and search the minds. So God is searching our minds, testing our hearts, seeing our inner being. Listen, there has to be a former manner of life. There has to be a testimony. And I hope this, this testimony has helped many of you to understand that you have, there's a way out to overcome your flesh. You hear me? I would wake up. The Bible says that every other sin a person commits is outside of their body, but those that commit, uh, 
sexual sin, sin against their own body. I would wake up in the morning with bruises and scratches all over my body. I would, I would be sleeping and evil spirits would pull my leg off the bed. I would feel like I'm levitating. I would, I would get sexually abused by incubus, succubus spirits. I would have bizarre encounters with like stuff like astral projection, visit, tangible visitations where I'm seeing women. I'm seeing people entering my room, defiling me, and I'm paralyzed, laying beside me in my bed, defiling me. And those would freak me out, and I would repent. God, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. All these things. And you wake up in the morning, and you can see that you've been defiled. Literally, you look on your body, and you can see you've been defiled. And there would be times where I'd be sleeping, and I would feel my body engaging into sexual immorality with the spirit. And you can't control your body. It's just happening because it's in a dream, but your body's moving. So that's when I realized I was heavily oppressed with marine spirit, soul ties, lust, and perversion. And once I began to really take it seriously, go through deliverance, pray, and fast, guess what? The dreams got crazier. Because I became more sensitive to the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost began to reveal deeper things unto me and I would get greater attacks that would discourage me. So sometimes, even when, you're, not sometimes, this will happen. When you live righteously before God after abstaining, the temptation will be crazier, the dreams will be crazier, and the devil will try to discourage you. But it's also a revelation that you further need, you need more deliverance and you have to keep going and keep going and keep fighting and win that battle. That's why the Bible says, he that endureth to the end shall be saved. So what I begin to do to overcome sexual immorality is I begin to control my environment. Throw my phone under the bed, laptop in a different room, cut off certain friends, unfollow people on social media, unfollow so certain social media accounts, watch what my eyes see, what movies am I watching, what music am I listening to, right? Am I listening to music with sexually immoral people that glorify sexual morality? Am I watching sexually immoral uh, movies? Uh, what is it? Am I following sexually immoral women? What, 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 is, what is it? Am I, am I talking to people late at night, opening the door late at night? So I had to control my environment. I had to control certain things in my life because my flesh was wild, like a wild donkey. But once I realized I had the power to control, block, delete, block, delete, block, delete, block, delete, run away. No. So I began to apply these things in my life. Was I perfect? No. But this was the start of my deliverance. And progressively, as I continued to read the word of God, I became stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And sometimes you'll have dreams of your exes, dreams of these people in your past and whatnot, because the devil's trying to open up that door with that particular person. I would wake up and terminate that dream in the name of Jesus Christ. And there was many soul ties I need deliverance from because you'd see all these different women in your dreams, right? And I had to get deliverance from those soul ties, prayer and fasting continually until it stopped. So don't say, prophet, I keep getting these dreams. Pray until they stop continually. If you keep having the dreams, keep going. You feel me? So that, that's how I overcame sexual morality through the word of God, understanding my authority and my identity in Christ. Because if you continue to struggle with sin, with that particular sin, it means that you don't know your authority and identity in Christ and you're a slave to sin. Yes, it's the truth. Because the Bible says you are of your father, the devil, because you do, you fulfill your father, you fulfill your father's desires because he has been sinning since the beginning. So we can't stay in a place of sinning, sinning. We can't stay there. There has to be a former manner of life, a former masturbation, a former pornography, former fornication. For, and once I got to that point, I begin to teach other people how they can get there too. But the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy when we live that lifestyle. And the, the, the breakthrough in my life began to take place once I began to live in repentance, which means that I turned away from sexual immorality for good. And I trust me, I was well known. I played, I, I played Division I basketball, ESPN. Tr like I was known professional about everything. You know what I mean? Um, and it was very easy to slip up. It was very easy to live, con to, to continue to live that lifestyle because they're so known and whatnot. You know what I mean? And 
But once I really begin to build my relationship with Christ, study his word, the fear of the Lord came back. It wasn't, it wasn't there because I was living in a lukewarm lifestyle and the Lord gave me up to a reprobate mind, literally. There was a time I had a reprobate mind. I had a reprobate mind. Conviction was not there anymore. But there'll be sometimes I'll be at the club and in that moment, suddenly, I hear a voice tell me, go home. I'll get conviction in the club randomly, drunk out of my mind. Conviction. Go home drunk on my knees, Lord, repent. I repent, Lord, forgive me. Fighting. But I was still battling my flesh. My flesh was controlling me. Because I truly didn't know my authority or identity in Christ. You understand? So I pray that this has helped you a little bit to understand that when you have those, there's a difference between like, um, you know, a desire for me, a desire to, for you to be intimate with your spouse and perversion. There's a difference. Perversion is like, uh, I can't function. I can't move. Like, I need this. Uh, and it, it, that's what perversion is. But intimacy, there's patience with intimacy. There's control with intimacy. It's not a, you're dragged away. It's not about that. It's love. And I can see a major difference between being married and being in the world. Massive difference. It's like when you're in the world living in sexual morality, it's like a drug. It's selfish. It's about um, what you're, you're only your needs. You being dependent upon something that doesn't suffice. But marriage is all about both partners. It's about love. It's about intimacy. It's about being joined together. You know what I mean? So that's, that's how I overcame sexual immorality. It was a battle. It was a fight. But the Bible says, choose whom this day who you will serve. And you got to make a choice and just stop. There was no, I used to message men of God and say, help me, help me, help me, pray for me about your pornography. And none of those prayers will help because at the end of the day, I had to make the decision. You had to make the decision. You just stop. If someone had a gun to your head and said, stop fornicating, stop masturbating, stop watching porn, would you stop it? 100%, because you fear the gun, but you don't fear God. Yes. And there are consequences to your sexual sin. There are consequences to your, your, the lifestyle that you live. It doesn't matter how much you ask for forgiveness and say, Lord, protect me. There are spiritual laws in the realm of the spirit called legal rights. So if you live in that and you dwell in that place of witchcraft or sexual morality, an evil spirit will legally torment you and live in you until you cast it out. doesn't matter how much times you pray, Lord, forgive me, Lord, protect me. They will enter because of spiritual law. You understand me? Choose to live in purity. Choose to live in righteousness. Choose to say no to peer pressure because I had peer pressure out the woo right? And if I could overcome, trust me, I have a horrible past. If I could overcome these things, you could overcome it as well. So I pray for you in Jesus' name that you will understand your authority and identity in Christ and that you will turn away from sexual immorality in Jesus' mighty name. I pray that you will understand that you are not condemned, but the lifestyles, the lifestyles that you entertain will condemn you, okay? But as long as you have air in your lungs, God is with you. God is with you. But if you continue those lifestyles without repentance, you will end up in hell. You will end up in hell because it's the works of the flesh that you're glorifying. Jesus said, um, if you love me, feed my sheep. And Jesus also told us that if, in, if you believe in me, you will also do the works that I do. So our belief is connected to our works. So if we say we believe in God, but we do the works of the devil, we're hypocrites, we're liars. Do you understand? Um, so I just pray for you now in Jesus' name that every evil spirit will leave you now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of lust, masturbation, addict, addictions to alcoholism, uh, pornography, um, drugs, I command it to break in Jesus' name. And I pray God will give you such a boldness that you'll tell your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your fiance, no, I'm not doing this. You'll tell that lady across the street or that man, no, I'm not going to do this in Jesus' name. I pray that you have the authority that you will understand your authority over your body. I pray that you will control your own body. I pray that you will be aware of the escape and the open door uh, that God has given you to run away from sexual morality. The Bible says flee from sexual morality. 
I pray that you would run away right now in Jesus' name and choose to serve the living God. God bless you.